everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I am in my kitchen, but I'm not doing an unboxing. I went to Food Town down the street and I got some sports drinks. And the reason I did this is because hydration is so critical, especially for active people and of course athletes. Gatorade, Powerade, and other sports drinks, and even Pedialyte are marketed as optimal for hydration. And lots of my skaters and athletes I work with bring these to practice. But here's the thing, are they better than water? If you're like most people, you've been drawn to these. I know I used to be to improve hydration and maybe even your performance at the gym or at the ice rink. So today in this video, I'm gonna talk about sports drinks. Are these really all they're cracked up to be? Are they the magic elixir to elite fitness? Are they a healthy option for athletes and active consumers? First, let's talk about water. And I don't mean this is not water. <laughs> this is water. If you watch my video about hydration, and if you haven't, there's a link to it down below. But if you did watch it, you know that water makes up most of your body. And maybe you know that without even watching that video. Water is essential to keeping your body functioning properly. It helps with functions such as regulating body temperature, maintaining moist tissues in your eyes and mouth. It protects your body organs and tissues. It helps with waste and elimination, lubrication of joints, carrying nutrients and oxygen to and from cells, and dissolving minerals and nutrients. For your body to function at its best, it's essential to replenish its water supply, especially if you exercise regularly and are sweating. Water is the main ingredient in many of these, but there's other ingredients as well. Sports drinks like these contain carbohydrates and electrolytes. Electrolytes can help regulate fluid balance. Carbohydrates in the form of sugar can help provide your body with energy. Electrolytes are minerals that assist in maintaining your body's ionic balance. They're minerals that carry an electric charge. And electrolytes found in the body include sodium, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, and calcium. Electrolytes can affect how the body functions. Water levels need to be balanced, both inside and outside of cells within the body. Electrolytes, in sodium in particular, assist you in maintaining this fluid balance through osmosis. Osmosis is the process of water moving from a dilute solution, which is more water, less electrolytes, towards a more concentrated solution. Less water, more electrolytes. The balance of water in and out of cells is critical. Too much water can cause cells to burst. Too little water can cause cells to shrivel due to dehydration. Water also helps your nervous system function. Your brain is constantly sending electric signals. These signals travel through the cells to communicate with other cells throughout the body. These nervous impulses are generated by changes to the electrical charge of nerve cell membranes. This change occurs due to the movement of sodium, which is a major electrolyte. When sodium crosses a cell membrane, it starts a chain reaction. More sodium ions move along the nerve axon. This axon conducts electrical pulses away from the neuron cell body. This is the primary transmission of the nervous system. Calcium is also an important electrolyte. It's needed for muscle contraction. It allows muscle fibers to slide over each other as muscles shorten and contract. Magnesium also assists in the muscle contraction process. It allows for muscle fibers to slide outward and relax following muscle contraction. pH levels. It's important for the body to regulate internal pH levels in order for it to stay healthy. pH is a measure of acidity. Within the body, this is regulated with chemical buffers. Weak acids and bases help minimize changes in the internal environment. Your blood is regulated to stay around 7.35 to 7.45 pH. Deviating from this may disrupt the body function. Having the right balance of electrolytes is critical for maintaining blood pH. So it is essential to replace electrolytes that are lost during exercise. It's extremely vital when you're working out in the heat. Failing to replace these electrolytes can lead to imbalances in the body and disturbances in the electrolyte balance can actually be harmful to your health. Symptoms of electrolyte imbalance include 
fatigue, muscle weakness, muscle cramping, fast or irregular heartbeats. Sports drinks do contain electrolytes, such as potassium and sodium, which can help replace what's lost during exercise. But we still don't know if you actually need them. So stay with me here. In addition to electrolytes, sports drinks usually contain sugar as well. Sugar is a carbohydrate. Carbs play a critical role in the makeup of sports drinks because they're typically a six to 8% carbohydrate solution. A 6% solution would normally contain approximately 14 grams of carbohydrates per eight fluid ounces. And carbohydrates are stored in the muscles and liver in the form of glycogen. This glycogen can be used for fuel during exercise. Carbs are the quickest form of energy for your muscles during exercise. Sports drinks usually contain two different kinds of sugar. The sugars are typically in the forms of glucose, sucrose, or fructose. And these sugars can be used by the body for quick energy while training. There is a time and place for sports drinks. Endurance athletes, for example, they engage in prolonged activity, lasting more than an hour. They could benefit from the addition of a sports drink. In addition, athletes that are working out in hot and humid conditions may also benefit from a sports drink to help them replenish electrolytes and fluids lost. Sports drinks were designed for athletes that are performing intense physical activity. In fact, Gatorade was developed to help replenish carbs and electrolytes in high intensity athletes at the University of Florida. So that's why it's called Gatorade because the Florida Gators. Research has demonstrated that sports strengths can benefit athletes performing longer, higher intensity exercise. However, most individuals in the general population do not exercise intensely enough or long enough in one period to really need a sports strength. Plus, warning, some rinks will not let you bring these on the ice because they're colored and they're not water. This one you could probably get away with, but should you is a different story. Because they're colored, they stay in the ice. So a lot of rinks will not let you bring them out on the ice. You can only bring clear water. And these are loaded with sugar. And if you're not training at those intense levels, that sugar can actually really hurt you. Unoriginal 20 ounce serving of Gatorade. And that's what I think, well, this is not original. This is cool blue. Because before I went to the store, I asked Colin, if I bought Gatorade, what kind would he want? He said the blue one. So this is two and a half servings in here. And this contains 21 grams of sugar. That is, well, per serving. Wow. If you drink this whole thing, you're getting 55 grams of sugar. 55 grams of sugar. So four grams is a teaspoon. Let's do the math. If you do the 12 fluid ounce serving here, you're getting 21 grams of sugar. Let's see what that looks like. This is 22 grams of sugar. That is five and a quarter teaspoons. And I did actually just buy this sugar because I don't keep this in the house. We have monk fruit sweetener and coconut palm sugar in the house. And we use this rarely. We use both of them pretty rarely. We don't really use a lot of sugar here. So five and a quarter teaspoons. So in one serving of this Gatorade is that much sugar. It's about an eighth of a cup of sugar. Can you see that? Let's do it this way on the milliliter side. That's a good amount of sugar. If you drink this entire thing, you're gonna take what's in here. So this entire thing is a quarter cup of sugar, 13.75 teaspoons of sugar in this Gatorade. That's a lot of sugar, guys. Wow. And if you watch my video about added sugar, you know that the American Heart Association recommends keeping added sugars to less than 25 grams per day. So this is double what it recommends that you have in a day. This is more than double what the American Heart Association recommends that you have in a day for sugar. That's a lot of sugar, guys, and that's just one drink. How many of you bring this to the gym? 
Raise your hand. Leave me a comment down below. Do you bring one of these to the gym? Do you drink it? Do you maybe keep it with you throughout the day and drink it? Let me know. The pH of this is three to four, which can actually hurt your teeth. This can definitely have a negative effect on weight loss as well, if that's what you're after. You gotta consider energy balance. This is a lot of calories. This is 220 calories in this whole container. So that's a lot of calories, and it's, it, they're not nutrient-dense calories. You would be better off eating 220 calories of something else and drinking water. Plus, there are obviously added colors, preservatives. Some of these have artificial sweeteners, too. I would say Pedialyte's a better option, but this has sucralose in it and artificial colors. So not really a better option. And I would say this doesn't have the artificial colors, but it does have preservatives and it also has sucralose. And this one has lower sugar. It only has seven grams of sugar. So that's a little less than two teaspoons. So in terms of sugar, this is way better, but it still has the artificial colors and sweeteners in it. Honestly, the best thing is water, or if you really need a sports drink, you can use coconut water, or make your own Gatorade. I have a recipe for that. I'll give you at the end. Because your main goal here is just to stay hydrated. So plain water is best for most people. If you're working out less than 60 or 90 minutes a day, water is just fine. It will keep you adequately hydrated without providing unwanted calories sugars, preservatives, and artificial colors. If you're working out at a higher intensity, it may be beneficial to use a sports drink or coconut water too. Now, if you wanna make your own sports drink, you can use a half cup of fruit juice. And if you have a juicer, juice your own fruit juice. That's even better. Or half a cup of coconut water, a quarter cup of sugar, but use coconut sugar. Or if you don't want any sugar, you can use monk fruit, sweetener, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and mix that with water, half a cup of water. If you use hot water, that will help dissolve the sugar. That is your homemade version of Gatorade. And that's not gonna give you all the crazy stuff that's in all of these. So leave me a comment down below. Are you still going to buy these sports drinks and drink them? Or are you going to choose water or Make your own sport drink if you have to. Leave me a comment down below and let me know. And remember, I post at least three videos a week, one fitness nutrition video, one unboxing video, and sometimes a figure skating video. And now I'm going out to the grocery stores too. So remember to subscribe and tap that bell so you never miss a video. This is Amy. I will see you real soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.